My name is uh, Dr. Yehoshaphat Ben Israel. I'm part of um, the member of the ICD advisory board. There's something unique about what we do in cultural diplomacy that I've learned over the period of time. And I'll just do the two backstories, which kind of would put in context why I'm standing here. Um, in one of the major ICD conferences, the general conferences, we had a lot of uh, diplomats, heads of institutions, etc., cetera, come in. And again, it's diplomacy, as you know, and normally on diplomacy, you walk on eggshells, if not uh, French, slippery French fries. But we had a situation, and you know the schism between Turkey and Cyprus and Greece after the overthrow of the archbishop, and it's literally divided. And the, the foreign minister, well, first we had, and Germany is literally the epicenter of the largest, and Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, the largest Turkish diaspora in the world. So we had the <clears throat> chief justice of Turkey come over, which was a great um, representation of Turkey to the ICD. He came in his own capacity with a translator. And he did a brilliant presentation. It was non-confrontational, presented in his own ways. And then right after that, an individual, and I think it was from Cyprus, the foreign minister, one of them came up, and she made a presentation too. But in the midst of the presentation and the excitement or the energy around, she kind of threw out some red herrings and stuff, which um, crossed the lines of Turkey's diplomatic sensitivity. So we were getting ready to go for a break, and the Turkish delegation was like, no, no, no. We have to respond to this now. And it was tense because we had to do this shuttle diplomacy between um, we have to go for a break, we've got a schedule, and Turkey being our honored guest, you know, saying, no, we're not going to allow these statements to go, you know, unresponded to. And at that particular time, there was a lot of heat. So we came to an agreement that, okay, we'll have to reslot Turkey back to respond but to respond in a manner that we weren't going to have ballistic missiles and at that particular time we didn't have drones and whatever uh, semantic you know, throwaways were going to happen in the midst of a cultural diplomatic conference. Uh, eventually after the break we brought the Turkish um, Chief Justice in and he did his presentation. It was very diplomatic. He smoothed out what happened and literally was all over. But that was how tense it was. But again, it, it is the substrate of cultural diplomacy that we seek to at least raise those kind of harmonious, albeit contentious things in a manner that is civil, if that makes sense, without any tomato ketchup or blood being spilt on the dance floor. Well, yesterday we had a similar situation where in the midst of we putting this together, we had the honor of His Highness coming over to uh, present. This is His Highness Iganda I. And after the conference, he raised a genuine concern that he had been invited to the conference to make a presentation. But on our program, we had him as a panel uh, member, which was brilliant because he was able to bring out a lot of things. But the sensitivity of cultural diplomacy speaks to that when any of our participants raise a genuine concern, we see as much as how we can accommodate them in terms of the further awareness, if that makes sense. So I spoke, I mean, His Highness raised that twice. He was not upset, but he just raised that, and he used the words diplomatically that he was ambushed from doing a presentation into being a panel you know, member, so he never did his presentation. So I mulled over it, or I marinated over it at night, and I said I'd give Mark a call this morning to see if we could fit him into today's program. Um, I did all that. And then I rang his highness to let him know that we had put him on because I did hear he was coming today, only for his highness to let me know, um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to come today because I have a prior engagement, which was like, that's brilliant. 
So again, in cultural diplomacy, I asked on behalf of His Highness if I could present, because he actually gave me his presentation, if I could present it on his behalf, and he obliged. So without much ado, on behalf of, again, cultural diplomacy and seeing how sometimes, and you would say academically, the elasticity of cultural diplomacy in a tight, eggshell walking environment, we try at least to migrate towards a degree of effectiveness in terms of cultural diplomacy moving forward and seeing how best we can raise awareness, if not solutions thereof. So if you may, it's not going to take too long. It's three sheets. I actually was going to be a little more creative and let my daughter, who is a 10 year, 11 year old, read it. But then once I came with some of the big, uh, you know, extra syllabic words, I realized it would not do any justice. And plus, it would have not been the best way to present it. So again, I'm presenting again on behalf of His Highness of Edo. I've actually asked what it is. I think I do know what it is. It should be the Ateca International Development Organization, Sheikh, would that be right? And they cover over of the 2,000 kingdoms in Africa. They literally are an umbrella organization of 600 of the 2,000 kingdoms in Africa, which again, Lord Howard, you spoke as in the Commonwealth. We literally, if I may coin or develop a term, talk about the Commonwealth of African traditional kingdoms. And they're at this particular time building the infrastructure which works outside the civil establishments of policy and governments. They literally engage in that to be able to move for development, um, cooperation, et cetera, et cetera, amongst those individuals. So if you may, I would put on my, and Lord Howell, you know, when we get to a certain age, we kind of inherit these intelligent eyes. I'll put on my intelligent eyes so I can see much more clearly. <clears throat> so on behalf of His Excellency, this is the ADO International Network. Um, the presentation was Transforming Lives Through Cultural Diplomacy by His Highness Papa Paul Eganda I the global president of ADO Network International. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. It is an honor to stand before you today at this important forum on cultural diplomacy. I am deeply grateful for this opportunity to address such a distinguished gathering of leaders thinkers, and practitioners who share a common vision in strengthening ties between nations. Today, we focus on a theme that resonates deeply with our mission at ADO Network International, promoting international cooperation, cultural understanding, sustainable growth, and global peace. At ADO Network International, our vision is to foster a world where cultural diversity is not only celebrated, but also harnessed to build peace, unity, and sustainable development. Our mission is to facilitate cultural exchange and engagement driving initiatives that empower communities, enrich lives, and contribute to a more harmonious global society, one that is rooted in the principles of human rights and the African philosophy of Ubuntu Kumuntu. Cultural diplomacy is the cornerstone of our work, and it is through this lens that we view our mission. We believe that by promoting cultural understanding, we can create pathways for international cooperation, sustainable growth, and ultimately global peace. In our work at ADO, we employ cultural diplomacy methods to bridge divides, foster dialogue, and build partnerships that transcends borders. ADO Network International brings together over 600 traditional and cultural leaders from Africa and around the world 
fostering collaboration on issues that affect our communities, such as female genital mutilation, acronym FGM, human trafficking of children, and modern day slavery, reparatory justice, conflict resolution, environmental stewardship, and community development. Our network operates on the belief that cultural leaders with their deep roots in their communities are uniquely positioned to drive change from the ground up. Our slogan, culture for unity and social progress, reflects our commitment to inclusivity. We embrace all people, placing humanity at the forefront of our efforts. ADU is transforming lives through culture by advancing a unification agenda aimed at reconnecting the African diaspora, particularly descendants of the transatlantic slave trade with their African roots. This powerful initiative encourages the diaspora to return to Africa and reunite with their heritage. Our success in this endeavor is made possible through international cooperation with cultural and traditional authorities, which strengthens the bonds between Africa and its global descendants. We need to promote international cooperation, but first, we must recognize our shared humanity and accept that we are all equal as human beings before God. Africa, a continent of immense diversity and dynamism with a population of 1.4 billion people is home to the world's youngest population with 60% under the age of 25. The continent also boasts a rapidly growing middle class and some of the fastest growing economies. The United Kingdom and other developed nations with their rich history of innovation, education, and global influence can be crucial partners in realizing Africa's vast potential. However, this partnership must be built on mutual respect and a genuine commitment to equality, values that are deeply rooted in the Ubuntu philosophy. Education and capacity building are key areas where this partnership can flourish. By investing in education, we invest in the future leaders of our society. The United Kingdom's world-class educational institutions have a vital role to play in providing opportunities for African students while also learning from the unique perspectives these students bring. Collaborative initiatives between schools and universities can foster a generation of leaders who are equipped to navigate and contribute to a globalized world. Technology and, in and innovation are also critical areas of collaboration. Africa is at the forefront of many technological advancements, from mobile banking to renewable energy solutions. By fostering partnerships in these fields, we can address global challenges such as climate change, healthcare access, and sustainable development. The United Kingdom's expertise in, refer, in research, beg your pardon, and development can complement Africa's innovative spirit, leading to solutions that benefit not just our regions, but the entire global community. Trade and investment are equally vital to our shared future, for example, free market zones for all and building cooperation with entities such as the African Continental Free Trade Area. 
By building on existing trade relationships and creating new opportunities for investment, we can drive economic growth and create jobs across the globe. Supporting small and medium-sized enterprises, which form the backbone of our economies, is essential in this endeavor. Ladies and gentlemen, promoting international cooperation, cultural understanding, sustainable growth, and global peace is a shared journey. It requires commitment, trust, and a willingness to learn from the past whilst looking forward to the future. At ADU Network International, we are dedicated to advancing cultural diplomacy as a means to achieve these goals. As we navigate the complexities of the 21st century, let us draw strength from our shared heritage and our common aspirations. In conclusion, let us harness the power of cultural diplomacy to build bridges between our peoples and nations. Let us work together to create a partnership that is equitable, sustainable, and mutually beneficial. Together, we can write a new chapter in the story of our world, one that reflects the best of our shared values, promotes global peace, and ensures sustainable growth for all. And in the words of the Ugandan language, Baete, and thank you all for listening.